Thomas and the Jet Engine. Gordon, the big blue engine, was feeling very proud of himself. He had broken the record again today while pulling the express. I am the fastest, he said. The other engines, however, weren't impressed. Speed is in everything, said James. But being reliable and useful is, said Thomas. Oh, please, little Thomas, said Gordon. You engines will never understand. And there's another thing. You will also never go as fast as me. Don't forget that Pip and Emma are faster than you, said James. But Gordon took no notice. He was so full of himself. Sir Dubham had then arrived. He then spoke to Thomas. I need you to pick up something and take it to the museum, he said. And what is it? Thomas asked. It's a jet engine. What is a jet engine? Percy wondered. It's an engine that pushes hot air out of its back. Just like how you blow up a balloon and let it go, added Thomas. It's very fast. And Thomas steamed off to the docks to collect the jet engine. As Thomas made his way to the docks, he couldn't help but think about wanting to go faster than Gordon. He wanted to do it just once. When he arrived, he was excited to see what he saw. It was the jet engine and the fuel. Hurry up, Quanky, Thomas called. I can't be late with this. Quanky was taking his time, and he wasn't paying attention to what he was doing. And before anyone could even answer, he was being careless with his hook. And the hooks accidentally turned on the switch on the jet engine, and the engine began to whine. It got louder and louder and louder. Uh-oh, this is not good, Cranky said to himself, and he was right. And the jet engine began to push Thomas along the way. The dockyard manager saw this, and he went to go phone the signalman's. Clear the lines now. There's a runaway train coming with the jet engine. Stop and stop all trains at once too. Keep all traffic halted immediately. Thomas was pushing so fast that he felt surprised and excited at the same time. Wow, boy, bust my buffers, he said. Thomas couldn't even think of what else to say. He couldn't tell the conductor while he tried to put on the brakes, but it was no use. As Thomas raced through the junction, he flew by James. And as he passed through Crosby, he raced by Henry. And as he was on the loop, he raced by Percy. All the three engines were amazed. Bertie was at the crossing and he was excited to see Thomas. Wanna have a race, Thomas? He asked as he called him. But as he saw Thomas race along the line with the jet engine, he changed his mind. Um, okay, never mind, he said to himself. No one had ever seen an engine go so fast before. Even faster than Gordon, 
even faster than Pepe Nama. Gordon was at Callendale and had no idea that Thomas was racing across the main line with the jet engine. He was too busy both thinking about himself going faster than any other engine. He then stopped thinking about it when he saw Thomas racing up the head as, and as he heard the jet engine. Hello Gordon, bye Gordon, called Thomas as he rushed through. Gordon could not believe what he was seeing. Then, the jet engine started to run out of fuel and Thomas began to run in his own power again. As Thomas still finished delivering the jet engine, he arrived back at the sheds and all the engines were there. Sorry for overtaking you back there at Callendale, Gordon, teased Thomas. Overtake me? I didn't even notice, Gordon said. You didn't even notice the fastest engine in the world? Henry chuckled. Yes, I am the fastest engine, laughed Thomas. But Percy felt a little sorry for Gordon. Gordon doesn't have to go fast as a jet engine, and neither does Pip and Emma. Gordon's just a steam engine, and both Pip and Emma are just high-speed diesels. Although... Gordon is still full of hot air, James laughed. Oh, the indignity, groaned Gordon.